effective from 4 p.m. today, uh, there will be some severe restrictions being put in place for those local government areas. The first is that density requirements will be restricted to one person per four square metres in all venues. Home gatherings will only be allowed to have two visitors to the home above those people who normally reside there. Uh, private activities will be restricted to 10 people maximum. Uh, there will be a prohibition on sports, spectating and participation. And we are stopping all private functions. The purpose of this is to dramatically reduce the movement within these local government areas while the investigation continues into the movement of this particular woman and her family so we can be sure that they're on top of this from a contact tracing point of view. So I'm happy to take questions. How long do you expect this to be in place? Well, at this stage, we're looking at a, uh, a minimum of seven days. Um, it will take that amount of time to um, firstly complete the contact tracing activities, but also um, for any indications of community spread to become apparent. So we are aiming for a seven day period at this time, but uh, we'll have to reassess as we work through those processes. Is this woman lying at her location in Victoria? Uh, we are still doing inquiries in relation to the person's movements. Um, we don't have a, enough information at this time to be absolutely clear on the movements. So until we do have that, uh, we are exercising uh, a high level of caution and taking these steps to ensure that if there is community spread, that we can get on top of it as quickly as possible and prevent further community spread. Are you investigating though whether she travelled to Melbourne and then Casperton and then into South Australia? We are certainly investigating uh, these, this person's movements uh, up to and including the time they uh, were tested positive. It's critically important that we identify every location the person's been to so we can actually establish uh, where there might be further exposure sites or where people may have come into close contact. And does that include looking at whether she's been to Melbourne? Absolutely, we'll be looking at uh, as much as we possibly can to have a clear picture on the movements and what the implications are for South Australians. Has she been asked that? Has she been asked straight up? The contact, uh, Professor Spurrier can probably elaborate on that, but the contact tracing team is working with her and SA Police are assisting with that process. The CEO of Captain Hospital has been clear to his staff that she travelled from Melbourne or Captain. Why on authority is he so um, clear? Well, if the, that particular person has information that is relevant to our uh, contact tracing efforts, maybe they should contact us and, and help out rather than make statements in the media that can't be substantiated at this How time. How frustrating that would be if perhaps this woman has lied. Do you know why she might have? Oh, look, <laughs> the reality is uh, people uh, are being encouraged to support the contact tracing effort. It is a confidential process. I think we've been through this before. The police don't have access to information that's disclosed. But notwithstanding that, and not talking about this woman specifically, people have different reasons for holding back information. Um, we can only encourage them to be as forthright as possible so we can get on top of this and minimise the potential for community spread. If she has lied, what kind of punishment could be in store for her? Well, let's not presume that she has. Let's just work through the process and we'll deal with that if that's what the circumstances unfold as we go through uh, our inquiries. Are there now exposure sites? Um, link to this woman's movements? Is That's exactly what we're working through now. Um, we don't have enough information at this time to be um, specific, which is why we've taken these steps to impose restrictions on the three local government areas I've mentioned. Uh, we do know that this will have an impact on this regional community. Um, as much as we regret that, uh, we think it's critically important at this time to minimise the potential for community spread until we have uh, as much information as we, we can possibly obtain to um, be more precise with these restrictions or potentially lift them completely if we can. Do police have CCTV vision of this woman leaving her home? I don't have that information, sorry. What about people in work and offices and stuff like that? Well, there's no restrictions on um, uh, attending employment, but uh, the density requirements do apply. Uh, wearing of masks will be compulsory in public areas as well, as it is in uh, the wider metropolitan area and also in high-risk settings. Uh, there are some specific aspects of the directions which will be uploaded as we speak, which people can have a look at, and we'll be putting comms out for the, the precise detail of exactly what's happening. But I think the strong message for people in Wattle Range Council, uh, the Grant Local Government Area, and the City of um, Mount Gambier, is to consider your own personal well-being as a priority. Think about your family and other community members. Please wear a mask, minimise discretionary activities, um, and do as much as you can to prevent any possible community spread if you might have possibly come into con contact with this person or been in an exposure site that we are yet to establish. If you find that um, the woman has in fact come from Melbourne, um, would, uh, can people expect that the border bubble will be changed back to the 70 kilometres? 
we're still inquiring in relation to this person's movements. So at, at this stage, it is too early to make any immediate changes to the, the uh, border bubble restriction that was put in place um, just a few hours ago. But as we said yesterday, that is for a seven day period while we assess the impact of this. Um, we are taking steps to minimise the potential for COVID-19, the Delta strain, to get into South Australia and put us in a situation that we're observing in New South Wales and Victoria. That's the last thing we want to do. We're still aiming at um, being able to lift a lot of restrictions in South Australia when we hit the vaccination targets that, are, that have been spoken about. The last thing we want is to go into an extended lockdown leading into that target date. So uh, we're encouraging everybody to do their part and uh, minimise the potential for this spread. We understand the impact on a regional community that this is going to have, but we think this is a prudent step in the circumstances. Could mandatory vaccination be the next step um, in terms of the border bubble requirements? That is an expectation that we are envisaging. Uh, SA Health are doing some work on that at the moment, but we would be looking to make an announcement about that sometime in the next few days. It may be the case that uh, cross-border community members will be required to have at least one vaccination in order to, to take advantage of the cross-border community bubble that we have in place. Uh, I'll hand over to Professor Spruity. That's all fine. That's not considered a private gathering. Uh, bigger pardon? Gyms? No uh, at the moment, it's only one person per four square metres in all venues. Um, but once again, people need to think about what, the, what activities are absolutely essential and make a, a conscious decision to minimise the risk to yourself and your families. Can I Is just there clarify, um, you said uh, no more than two people besides householders in a home. Um, you said 10 people for private gatherings, but private functions are cancelled. So private, a private activity uh, that is allowed to have 10 people would be a wedding or a funeral uh, or any other small gathering uh, for a specific purpose uh, with a discrete group of people. Um, we have seen the evidence uh, that home gatherings uh, have the greatest potential for spreading COVID-19, so that's why the determination has been made that only two visitors to the home at any one time. And just to clarify, the woman's movements in Mount Gambier, is there any, any indication at this stage that she's moved through those local government areas more so than was, than was previously perceived? Look, we are still investigating this person's movements, so we don't have a clear picture at this point in time. But the purpose of including uh, the three local government areas is the close proximity of some of these small communities with each other, and we don't want the purpose of uh, the restrictions being placed on one local government area being undermined by people's ability to simply travel to another local government area in close proximity and the potential for anyone who may have been in contact with this woman to have done exactly that, gone from Mount Gambier to another small town in, in the near vicinity. So we're putting a boundary around that. We think it's a prudent boundary, uh, but we are continually assessing, and as soon as we have more information, then we're hopeful that we can make some changes to that. What is the absence of information is uh, one factor. Uh, we don't have enough information to have confidence that we're on top of this person's movements. Uh, we are taking steps to obtain as much information as possible, plus family members and other associates that may have come into contact with the family. So rather than wait and let this thing get out of hand or get beyond our capability to bring it back, we're taking these steps now and hopefully we can make positive changes uh, sooner than later. We're in school holidays. Um, would you be recommending for families currently holidaying in Mount Gambier to get out? Uh, as I've said before, the, I think a key element to living with COVID is being flexible with your travel plans. My strong recommendation to people who are currently holidaying in Mount Gambier, uh, if there are not, no pressing commitments that you have to um, attend to, please come home. Uh, anyone can, contemplating a, a trip to Mount Gambier or these local government areas you must appreciate that you will be bound by the same restrictions as the local community and I would discourage people from attending unless it's critical. I'll hand over to Professor Scalia. Thank you and good afternoon. And I just wanted to follow up on one point that you asked, Andrea, um, about the vaccination for people in that border bubble and crossing that border. So we did say that yesterday at our press conference that we were looking at that, um, and that's likely to come in within a week. We know that's what has been done in Queensland, between the Queensland and New South Wales border. Um, and it does give people a choice because they don't have to cross the border, but um, it is one way of protecting South Australia at the moment. Um, so I will give a little bit more information um, uh, pertaining to this particular outbreak and or case in Mount Gambia, but we actually do have another case um, unrelated in South Australia and I've got some further details on that as well. So uh, as the Commissioner said, we are starting to get um, a, a little bit more information from this particular individual because there are people that have come forward and said that they um, 
they feel they may have had contact with her. And so we have been able to um, uh, confirm that there are 12 primary close contacts that we're aware of, uh, and that's including, um, I believe, the um, uh, children as well, the, this woman's children. And uh, the good news is out of those 12, we have 10 negative tests, which is great news. And then we always um, extend to look at primary uh, close con uh, uh, secondary close contacts as well. So there are people that have been in contact with the primary close contacts and there's 21 um, secondary close contacts and we've got five negative tests back already, which again is good. Of course, if the primary close contacts are negative, then there is no risk to those secondary close contacts. Um, so that's where we're up to in terms of getting our test results. Um, so um, uh, I would just like to also say that there are a number of reasons why people don't always uh, tell us absolutely um, um, what they have been up to and one of those is that they might be frightened or they might be um, anxious and so we just need to be very very cognizant that not everybody is in the same situation as we might ourselves find ourselves in and we just need to take things quietly and cautiously and um, our contact tracers have wonderful relationships that they build with individuals and I want to absolutely um, confirm to the South Australian public that when you provide information to our contact tracers that is kept very confident confidential. It's never used as part of a criminal investigation um, and it's very important that we keep that as very privileged um, public health clinical information and so I just like the public to be uh, feeling reassured and the same will be in this circumstance as well. Of course we'll use every effort that we can and all sorts of uh, ways of trying to uh, corroborate this information because it's important from a whole of population perspective that we're able to do that. Um, now, I'll just move on because we do in fact have another case. We seem to be having a new case every day here in our state at the moment. And this is a man in his 30s and he's a truck driver. Um, and that brings us to having uh, four active cases in our state. So this is a man that's come from Victoria. He arrived here on um, uh, Saturday night, the 2nd of October, and he developed symptoms yesterday. He's now gone back to Victoria, and so um, he will be, um, it'll be for the Victorian Health Authorities to be chasing him up and make sure that he's isolating. So um, we have one public exposure location at this stage, which is on the run at Port Augusta, and that includes both the petrol station and the trucky lounge. Now, um, we know he was there uh, last night, late into the evening, and we're reviewing the CCTV footage to get the exact times. But he is infectious, and so we're going to be expecting to have um, a, a number of people requiring um, uh, quarantine because of this exposure. So my understanding is that he has had one dose of vaccine, but that's obviously not enough to stop you getting um, infected. And uh, it's absolutely possible that he will be able to transmit the disease onto other people. Um, so a bit disappointing again for us here in South Australia, we've got yet another problem, but it really highlights that that close border between us and Victoria and also New South Wales poses such a risk for us here in our state. Um, the testing rate here in South Australia, just under 4,000 tests yesterday, that's really not enough for us to be able to feel confident um, that we're on top of things and are picking up any possible cases of COVID in our community. And I guess on that point, I would just like to thank so much the, the woman, the case from yesterday in Mount Gambier, the fact that she went and got tested has meant that we've been able to do this uh, contact tracing and get her and her family into quarantine. Um, if she hadn't got tested, we wouldn't be in this situation as we are now. We would be chasing our tails because it would be a number of days before other people got sick in that area and would have to come forward um, and we would find out late down the track. So um, please think uh, about all of that, that, that sort of wider context when you're thinking about what's happening there in Mount Gambia. If you happen to have any symptoms whatsoever, so ever of COVID-19, even very mild, the place to go is for a COVID test. And after you've had your COVID test, if you're not vaccinated, just please go and book in and get your vaccination. So very happy to take further questions. Professor, did she lie about her location and whereabouts in Victoria? 
So um, we have certain information that we get from the individual and then we corroborate that information from other sources. And I'm not going to be um, pulled on was she lying, was she not. I've already explained to you that there are certain reasons why some people might not give us the full information at the beginning. And we understand this in public health. This is not a new phenomenon. This happens to us um, uh, all the time in public health because we're dealing with uh, human beings um, and we are all in different circumstances. So we've got a, a biological agent, the virus, and that can be very um, uh, uh, unpredictable. And then we have human behaviour on top of that, and um, people have to deal with all sorts of life circumstances. So I'm definitely not going to be uh, drawn in on that conversation, Harvey, but I can say that we will use other ways of corroborating that information so that we can uh, make sure that people across South Australia are safe. But, but was, it, was it was it possible? In town in Cassidy at the moment, I guess what I want to know is, did she visit family in Cassidy? Because there's a town there that's really panicking, it's never had a case in there. Very concerned. So I can't tell you at this point in time whether or not she did um, visit that town, but we'll, we'll be uh, seeking further information as we can throughout um, the uh, investigation. So you don't know if she contracted the virus in Cassidy, which suggests she may have visited somewhere else? No, we cannot uh, uh, define that at the moment. We know talking to our Victorian counterparts, of course we did that straight away and told them about this case, uh, and they said that they, that they haven't had any other cases in Cassidy. Tested in, um, and uh, of course they have got other cases elsewhere in Victoria. Um, so we'll just continue to um, uh, speak to this particular person, and we'll continue to look at other ways of getting um, evidence and information. Is she cooperating with cooperating? Sorry, with uh, health authorities. Yes, she's uh, co cooperating with us. Um, she hasn't been very well. She spent the night at the Royal Adelaide and I'm sure she's worrying about her children um, and she's in Tom's Court at the moment and we'll continue to build that relationship. Um, for many people, it's pretty frightening getting COVID. Um, all of a sudden, the spotlight's on you and all these questions are being asked. And so for every individual, we have to be respectful, we have to take the time and we need to um, be building those relationships. Do you have any exposure sites in Mount Gambia? Um, the, the rumour mill is, is flying around up there that there, she might have been to servos and other stores? Um, when we have definitive information about any exposure sites, we'll definitely not be withholding that from the public. That'll go up on our, um, our website and so people will be able to have a look and see. Can you but, that today? Uh, we'll, as soon as we get it, we'll put it up on the website. So, um, yeah, we, we will be following that the through. people in the public came to us Health and said, we believe we've been in contact with this woman um, when she arrived back on Friday, in between that time. Yes, yeah, so um, some people have, and we've taken that story very seriously, and we are now considering those people close contacts, and that, that's why we've got um, more close contacts. Fortunately, as I've said, 10 of those 12 people have tested negative, they'll need to go into quarantine. And so if there's anybody else that believes uh, they might be a close contact, of course, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, uh, some people have contacted SAPOL, some people have contacted the Mount Gambia Hospital. We have our COVID hotline and it's a 1300 number. And I'd be really grateful if anybody is concerned that they give our um, hotline a call and uh, we can get that information and get our contact traces to um, discuss any of those issues with you. It sounds like you're fairly empathetic towards the woman about whatever her movements in Victoria might have been. Is there any reason for that? Why are you so empathetic about this? Situation. Well, I guess um, as a clinician, as a doctor, um, my job involves being empathetic and being understanding of people. And I think also when you're doing public health investigations, you're much better to develop relationships with people so that they can feel that they uh, trust that you're doing it in, in a good way. And so that's what our contact tracing team do. That There is a very strong um, a culture within public health and within communicable disease that you develop relationships with people and we know from experience we get better results not only for that individual but for the greater community and so that's the, the way we will continue to work. There's a lot of frustration though in the border communities have had businesses um, affected school kids who can't come across the border now another mum who was booked to a Mount Gambier hospital can't get across. How imperative is it now that to find out if she was there, will, you, will that trigger, if she wasn't in Cassidy, and it wasn't the source of the you know, virus, 
push that forward back to school? Yeah, so we were only doing that for a seven day period until we could do the further investigation. I absolutely feel for those people in the border communities. We've had uh, many discussions with those communities over a long period of time. We've tried to make that bubble um, as wide as we possibly can to make sure that we accommodate everybody. And um, I do feel, um, again, empathetic towards uh, the people in that community because we're now requiring the seven day testing. It is for seven days um, that we've uh, shrunk that bubble. And of course, um, once we've got a bit more information as to um, the whereabouts of this, um, our case and making sure that we don't have any other positive people from that area, then we will be very happy to revert it back to where it was previously. Grant has one of the uh, lowest levels of vaccination rates in the country. How concerned are that you about this virus getting out into that area? So we were having a look at the vaccination rates in Grant and it didn't really make a lot of sense to me because actually Mount Gambia, there's 76% of eligible adults um, uh, have had a vaccine. Um, so that's the Mount Gambia uh, township itself. And actually looking into this in more detail today, um, our vaccine team uh, suggested that it may be because people in Grant actually um, register their postcode as a PO box as um, you know, their, their address is a PO box in Mount Gambia. So it may look artificially low and we're just going to delve into that in a little bit more detail. Um, so it may not actually be uh, quite as bad as we thought when we looked at it yesterday. In regards to the truck driver, how many people have been ordered into quarantine so far? So this was very early uh, days with this. Our team only got this uh, result um, later in the day. And so they'll be pulling QR uh, codes and SMSing people. Um, it's very important with this that we get the CCTV because it does sound as though he was at that um, particular service station and the, um, the, the rest area for truck drivers for quite a long time. Um, so we need to be quite sure that we've got that accurately, that, that, that um, full time period. And do you expect the list of exposure sites linked to him to grow? Um, again, the team um, don't just do one investigation, they keep reviewing the information and if there's anything more we will be putting that up on our um, website. I guess one of, a, one of the positives is that he was only in our state for a very short period of time um, and so hopefully it is just going to be that one exposure site. The uh, freight industry, as people know, have worked really closely with health authorities that the drivers um, do their very best to try and minimise their time uh, uh, that they are um, exposed to members of the public. One of the things our team will do is have a look to make sure he was wearing a mask, for example. Um, I don't have that level of detail at the moment. Has the news given you any indication of the contact traces, any indication of why she may have not told the full truth? Um, no, and that's not really the sort of information I'd be giving at a press conference either. I just think it's really important that the public uh, understand that when you talk to our contact tracers, it's like having a discussion with your doctor. We keep that information confidential. We're seeking the information to keep the South Australian public safe. Uh, and that's what we want the information for. But you can understand that sometimes people are a bit scared. Sometimes people um, have had um, uh, uh, issues with authority figures in the past and they may have come from a different um, uh, background, they might have come from overseas, they might speak a different language. So there's all sorts of reasons uh, why, why people may not um, tell us um, the full story right at the beginning uh, and that's why our contact tracers continue to work with people over a long period of time. The internal email from Cassidy Memorial Hospital makes it pretty clear, they're pretty conclusive that she travelled from Melbourne to Cassidy to SA. Why are we not so conclusive yet? Um, we don't have that full information and as the Commissioner said, um, we will be seeking further information. Uh, we can't do the investigation on the Victorian side, we can focus on our side but we do, uh, certainly my team talk uh, regularly with the Victor our Victorian counterparts. We, As soon as we got this case, um, one of my deputies rang the Deputy Chief Medical Officer from Victoria, so we'll continue to dialogue. And how are the four children doing? Um, well, uh, they're, they're fine. They don't have any symptoms. They're negative at the moment. I'm hoping that they're relaxing at Tom's Court. I know our nursing staff always put on a great um, program for children. Uh, it can't be too much fun being locked in a hotel, um, but hopefully, yeah, they're doing well.
Now, did you say at the start of the press conference that um, for cross-border communities, if they're trying to cross the border within seven days, that the vaccines will be mandatory? Is that correct? So we're looking at bringing in a, a mandate for the border crossing requiring vaccination. We're looking at bringing that in um, in about seven days. So I said in my press conference yesterday, urging anybody that um, will require to cross that border to make sure that they are vaccinated. Is there any consideration to a sterile corridor at Adelaide Airport for travellers coming in from Sydney and Melbourne? Um, yes, it's, that's a very good question because we do have a sterile corridor for our international arrivals. It is a very busy airport and uh, we've been working very closely with Adelaide Airport to maximise the space there. But there are certain things that you, you just can't overcome. And of course, the international arrivals come through a different section, whereas the domestic um, come through, uh, as you know, in, in a more joined up uh, way. So it would be quite difficult logistically because it would then determine which planes came and where and uh, some of those things even though health might love to be able to do that it may not be possible from an um, air safety and a, um, uh, air traffic management perspective. Have, have you had conversations with Casperton Hospital about the content of the um, CEO? No, I haven't had a copy of the CEO's memo. That person hasn't contacted me. Um, so it was uh, really, no, I haven't had any communication from that particular person. Okay, thanks, ladies and gentlemen.